hi everyone. Uh, my name is Vardhaman Deshpande, uh, and then I thought today we could kind of discuss, go through uh, Microsoft Rush, and then how it can be used to kind of manage large SPFX repositories. Now, uh, the SPFX repositories could get fairly large depending on how you set them up, and especially when it comes to library components and them getting uh, generally available soon. Uh, I think it would be kind of uh, good to learn about different ways uh, to manage large repositories and uh, with with multiple library components and uh, consumer components as well. So so imagine uh, you're, you're working on a fairly uh, large solution and you have something like a structure like this where you have like an organization wide uh, utility component, which is an X SPFX library component, uh, which is used throughout your company. Uh, then working with like a specific project, uh, you create your own library component and then you have certain consumer web parts and extensions which uh, hook into those uh, library components. And then there's a dependency on uh, of uh, there's a dependency on the utility library in the organizational library as well. So like you can start seeing how this these, this structure can get fairly complicated fairly quickly, uh, especially in things like uh, uh, you have to manage multiple node modules folder if you're if you're using npm. Uh, I know some package managers like pnpm have uh, have other ways to address that. But say if you're using NPM, then you have to manage multiple node modules folders. Also, you have to manage uh, the dependency tree yourself. Like for example, if uh, utility library gets updated, you have to know which other uh, downstream dependencies have to be updated with that as well so that uh, they don't break. And as, as kind of projects like these get larger, it becomes harder and harder to manage uh, independent uh, NPM packages and modules. So uh, there are certain tools available which kind of help you uh, help you address this situation. And one of them is Microsoft Rush. Uh, if you go to the Rush website, you are able to see all the all the different features uh, Rush makes makes available, and it's used internally at Microsoft in in certain uh, products as well. Uh, we'll talk about like more more different uh, uh, tools. Uh, alternatives to rush a little bit later as well uh, but this this, uh, this the topic of this uh, demo is mainly around rush so uh, uh, one thing uh, we we need to kind of understand is a lot of a lot of benefits which you get uh, when you're working with Microsoft rush uh, is that you don't it, it manages uh, all your node modules of all the different SPFX solutions in a single location. It also creates a, a single lock file. Um, and then when, once you update in a single command, it, it tries to detect which of your packages were updated and it uh, updates the relevant uh, downstream dependencies as well. So we'll see a quick demo. Uh, th the first demo is fairly simple. It's just a one to one relationship. So there's one uh, library component and then one uh, SPFX web part which uh, which uses that library component. So in the first demo, um, it's just a, a normal structure where I've got an SPFX web part uh, which imports a library component and just prints the name of the component. And then in the package, it uh, there's a dependency on that. Uh, so once uh, so let me let me try and update this library component um, let me call it okay and then uh, i won't go into how uh, go to the detail steps of how you can set up rush i think the website also has uh, great details as well as i've got them in my blog post as well so once everything is set up and then you update your library component, you just have to do rush build. And it will start determining uh, what which packages in your tree changed and it will uh, it will update the downstream dependencies as well as the packages immediately. Uh, it also can uh, run builds in parallel. So depending on your CPU and how much uh, power it can uh, command. Uh, right now, you can see there's only three simultaneous process, but we don't need need those right now. Uh, so it can also update multiple packages in parallel if they don't have dependencies on each other. So hopefully this will complete in pretty quickly. 
uh, this was this was to kind of just show that uh, once you update a, a, a component, all the packages which depend on it are updated as well. Uh, yes, so you can see that the two packages updated. Now, another quick thing I, I can show you is, say you don't need to update the library, you just update your consumer web parts. So, uh, so again, going back and doing another. So straight away, it will determine that the library component did not change, so it's going to skip it. And it's only only going to uh, go and update the uh, go, uh, the package which has the web part. Now behind the scenes, this is running all your normal uh, Gulp bundle, Gulp pack, uh, package solution commands. Um, we, you can see the details about that in the blog post uh, as well. So just a quick demo to show that it only uh, updates um, the the packages which have changed. And yeah, so you can see that in the report that uh, only the uh, web part uh, package was uh, updated and the library components was skipped. Now uh, we'll we'll see a slightly uh, more complex demo as well, where it's going to kind of uh, listen to or, or it's going to demo th this structure. Uh, now, as I mentioned. Um, it can also detect parallel builds. So for example, if the organizational library component is going to get updated, it will update the dip downstream dependency as well, and it will it will kind of determine that the second component doesn't need to be updated, so it will skip that as well, uh, along with the utility library because that's uh, not getting updated because uh, it doesn't have any dependency. So going back, uh, similar kind of structure in the apps folder. I have two SPFX uh, solutions. One is uh, the first app, which uh, has a dependency on the directly on the utility library, and then in the second app, it has a dependency on the organizational library. And then when I go in the libraries folder, the organizational library has a dependency on utilities library as well. Uh, now, when I go here and I update the organizational library, then I do a rush build again. It's straight away going to determine which uh, which components need to be updated. So first of all, it skipped the utility library because as you can see, it's a top level library. It doesn't need to change because organizational library has changed. Similarly, it's it skipped the second app as well, which directly depends on the utility library because that doesn't need to change uh, because organizational library has changed. And then it will start uh, it will start uh, building the packages which need to change. So as you can see, like you can probably start imagining how how easy it would be to manage large repositories with many bundles and you can have multi level uh, dependencies in it as well. Now the way it kind of determines is to which package packages should be updated is due to this uh, file called rush.json. So in that, uh, this uh, this has to be manually configured when you set up rush. Uh, so in that, you can configure the name of the package and then which folder is that package going to live in right now. And when when it uh, traverses the package.json file of certain certain packages, uh, it determines which is the dependencies and then it goes and uh, looks in that folder and updates the packages accordingly. Uh, also, another thing to remember is that it uses the git change files to uh, git, git change tracking to determine which files are updated and accordingly update the relevant packages. So today, uh, if you're using another version control system like TFVC, for example, uh, Rush won't uh, help you in that that sense as of now. So I've got all the details in my in my post around like what are the benefits and what are the advantages and things to consider as well. And I've got a detailed kind of walkthrough of how to set up uh, uh, the, the the simple simple project which we saw earlier as well. Now one thing I should mention is this uh, mono repository or mono repo is, is not a new concept. It has been in uh, existence since, since a while. So there are other kind of package uh, mono repo managers available as well. Uh, so one of them is Lerna, which is uh, which is fairly, fairly common. And Sergey has got a great post on how to use Lerna to manage SPFX projects. 
so if you go through the post, you can see uh, the Insile.js and Create React App, all of them use this. So I haven't used it myself, but something to explore as well. And uh, that's that's about it, Bert. That's what I wanted to cover. So if uh, I think I probably didn't use as much as time as I had. Um, that's fine, I think. It's really, again, a really cool demo, and, and Rush indeed is, is, is a pretty nice tool for the scenario. Uh, we use them totally uh, for our own uh, inside the Shepherd organization. It has been built from there on. Yeah. And yeah. yeah so it, it's, we use it on a daily basis. So uh, it's good that, that we see some external usage as well from that now, and that you uh, have, have a nice block uh, kind of explaining how to get started with it. Uh, combined with this video, so um, this will get some more folks uh, getting started with, with Rush, uh, I think. But thanks for the demo, Vladimir. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem.